Good morning, everybody. I thought the highlight of our week would be visiting a particle accelerator, but uh, this is uh, definitely got to be it. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jack. Uh, this is Javi. Uh, we both work on Alma Linux, and we'd like to talk to everyone about some work that we've been doing, uh, pioneering work around software supply chain security and software bill of materials. So of course the obligatory welcome slide. Okay, so what is an S-bomb? Uh, an S-bomb, wow, it's funny. Okay, cool. Yes, okay, thanks Neil. <laughs> Uh, what is an S-bomb? An S-bomb is basically a list of ingredients for your software. Uh, similar to uh, a recipe for something you would cook in your kitchen. So uh, basically S-bomb is the ingredient list and your build system is the kitchen in which you assemble all these lovely parts into functional software. So why are S-bombs important? Um, if anyone followed all the log for j log for shell stuff um basically having s bombs helps you identify what specific software components you have in your builds and in your software and where exactly they are so if there's a large scale vulnerability that is found and you need to look in a lot of different places to figure out where it is in order to be able to remediate uh Basically, S-bombs make that possible. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how that happens. Um, one very important thing that everyone needs to know about is uh, in the United States, so the president issued an executive order on improving uh, the nation's cybersecurity, and part of that executive order was that any federal agency which is using any piece of software, not just open source software, needs to provide an S-bomb for that piece of software um, to the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. And uh, there's a little bit of a blurb on there, but basically they, they want to be able to find security risks and remediate them as quickly as possible um, anywhere in federal infrastructure. And so uh, especially we've been working uh, with different federal agencies and stuff. And so this has come up as something that's a requirement. So I'm glad to announce uh, Alma Linux is the first distribution to notarize and provide SBOM for all of our sources and components. Uh, this actually, we actually notarize the CentOS sources as well. So that's kind of a cool like side effect of this, but part of why we wanted to present the work on this here. Um, why did we do this? Well, primarily, obviously we're bored and we have nothing better to do. <laughs> Um, second thing is, uh, security matters. Uh, the third thing is, uh, code notary, uh, are one of our platinum sponsors, uh, platinum members of our foundation. And they actually, uh, have a really, really cool, um, supply chain security suite. Um, it's not just one thing, but, um, they have like a bunch of different components that are part of their product. And it's really, really cool. A lot of that stuff is also open source. They have a community service, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, also we wanted to bring value to, to obviously Alma Linux and the EL, EL ecosystem at large, right? Um, so the, the supply chain traceability of the artifacts involved in making the OS and also uh, this serves an additional layer of system integrity verification. So uh, Code Notary has a couple of different pieces. Um, the first kind of piece, and I'm going to start at the bottom, is something called MUDB. So MUDB is an immutable database. It's basically uh, like a blockchain, but without all the bullshit of a blockchain. Um, and there are ways uh, to, to verify that the data within the database hasn't changed. This is, of course, very important for an S-bomb because once you store an S-bomb somewhere, you need to make sure that that S-bomb wasn't changed by someone that compromised the system. So the, everything in the back end is stored in, in their MUDB. Um, now, what they did is they have an enterprise product, which they sell, but they also have something called the community attestation service. 
And the community attestation service is basically uh, like an open source community service, which obviously doesn't have the full feature set of the enterprise product, but it'll let you notarize stuff. It get, you get an API key and then you can use their tools to notarize all of your software and build your S bombs and store them in, in MUDB in the back end. So really, really cool cutting edge technology. This is still like all of this stuff is really in the early days. So it's really cool to kind of like catch and ride this wave right at the beginning. Um, so a little bit about our tools and I want to give Javi uh, is one of our build system developers. And so he's been doing a lot of the work around this stuff. So I want to give him a chance to speak, but um, basically the tool set that we're using, we're using uh, the CAS utility. We're using, we put together a Python wrapper uh, just to make it a little bit easier to uh, integrate into our workflow. And of course our build system and uh, we wrote an SBOM generation utility. So I'll hand it over to Javi who will take us over some of the like technical deep dive stuff on how we're doing this uh, because he's been doing the work. So I feel like he's the one that should be talking about it. Okay, thanks Jack. Okay, hi guys. Okay, so I don't want to get you bored with, with very deep tech stuff, uh, but yeah, so everything uh, begins at the point where we import our, uh, well, CentOS uh, Git sources. So this way we ensure that both upstream and downstream Git sources are notarized and uh, we added metadata that provides relevant information about every commit. So, and we follow this, this process, all this process. Uh, let's say that we take uh, we, the CentOS commit. Uh, we, uh, so we have a, the Git updater, I'm not sure, yeah. It's a service that we use to automatically get sources from CentOS. So we take them, we notarize them, and then we create a commit into our Git uh, repos, into Alma Linux Git repos. And um, yeah, we notarize it again, and then we push it, notarize. So this way we ensure that every, uh, so we can keep track of the, the chain of this of these commits and that uh, every record is stored in the in the CAS, in Mu, in MuDB, in immutable database. So this is how a uh, source, an Alma Linux source CAS record looks like. So here we have to first uh, um, explain that we have three kinds of Git sources. One is uh, Alma Linux sources. These are sources that, uh, uh, for packages that, for example, we have to manually update from uh, CentOS or that we use for our um, own packages, such, such as, I don't know, Alma Linux backgrounds or something like that. So as you can see, we have like uh, information about the author that made the commit, the commit hash, the commenter, uh, the message, uh, PGP signature, which is missing here, not sure why, the parent commit and the tree. And then the signer ID, in this case, this is our Alma Linux side signing ID, uh, whether this API, AP, uh, API key is revoked or, and whether this uh, record is uh, trusted. So if well, for whatever reason we want to untrust this, we just uh, can't do it and uh, uh, a user knows that this record is not, uh, uh, let's say, tr reliable anymore. So yeah. Then we have the CentOS source cast record. In this case, we it's very similar to the to the to the previous one. I mean, nothing very special about it. But when we uh, take this record and import it into our sources. We then reference it here in the upstream commit as from hash. So that's, and the rest of the information is just the same. 
Uh, then, uh, when all our Git sources are notarized, then we, uh, within the build system, we authenticate every single source uh, that's, that has been used as an input for a build in our build system. Then we, of course, we provide some information in the user interface, in the build system interface that, you know, indicates you whether a source has been notarized or not. And um, we, uh, when sending this build information to different build nodes, we ensure that every artifact, uh, we understand by an artifact a build log, for example, or a um, the output uh, um, RPM package that is notarized. And, um, and yeah, and after all, we ensure that all artifacts that we are updating into our, our pulp instance are notarized. This is how a, uh, a record, a cast record looks for an, an RPM. And as you can see, uh, we reference the uh, comet hash, the version of the package, the epoch, missed that one, the Alma comet as well hash, the architecture, the build ID, release, I mean, everything that describes uh, a package in a way that you, you cannot, you know, uh, that, yeah, exactly, that, that you cannot, you know, say this is another, no, it's univ univocally this, this package, this version. And uh, that's regarding building the packages. And then uh, there is the last process uh, to put this into a, our build system repo. So we authenticate every single artifact when, the, when every package is going to be signed. We notarize them. And then again, we ensure that everything that we have notarized um, is, is going to be uploaded into, into all Porp uh, instance of the build system. And then there is the last uh, leg of this thing. So we take um, every artifact that is going to be released into our production repos. And uh, if, if it's not notarized, so we are not going to be allowed to release this into our production repos. This way we ensure that our operating system is not including uh, anything that has not gone through the whole process of authorization. And I think uh, that's all regarding the CAS side of things and the build system. And now we have an, uh, the other part of this process, which is a, the, the S-bomb per se. So these, so we created a small utility that, allow, that, that allows us to create uh, SBOM documents of, um, of the bills and the packages that we released into to our production repos. And um, we take information both from the CAS database and from the build system. And then we take this information and put together into um, uh, Cyclone DX SBOM documents and uh, can be either output to JSON or Excel, Excel files. <clears throat> then um, we also use this tool to notarize um, uh, the Git sources that are automatically notarized. So for example, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the um, Alma Linux backgrounds. So this is something that we maintain ourselves and that we have to manually no tries, and we created this tool to uh, make this process easy. And um, I think that's all in terms of this. So just to, I don't want to deep dive into, you know, all the SBOM format, but in this case, <laughs> I'm just going to, to, to do a quick overview of, of it. So we have common data in every SBOM record uh, as bomb document, so uh, the format, spec version, uh, the version itself, because you can uh, update your S bomb documents for a piece of, of software, uh, the serial number, uh, which is unique, 
uh, a metadata block, which I'm going to explain here, and the dependencies block. So in the metadata block, uh, this is where you put everything that is going to describe your component uh, in a way that you add uh, a timestamp. The tools that uh, have been used to create your piece of software and then the component itself, describe the component itself. This is the type of component, a bomb reference, which is unique as well, the name and the properties, okay? Uh, then we have another blocks that are, uh, that are included there, such as dependencies, which is something that you have to, to add. This describes the dependencies that are part of your component and then if you have another components that you are including into your S1 document, I'm going to, you are going to understand this later. So this is optional. So yeah, this is mostly the, the common format. So for a package, we include in a component to describe the component, we include the publisher. In our case, we just use Salma Linux, um, the name of the package version, a SHA 256, uh, the CPE, this is the common platform uh, enumeration dictionary that you can use to identify, um, for example, in OVAL, we use it to describe uh, the version of a uh, of the distribution, uh, the Perl, which is the package URL. This is a format that aims to standardize how we describe uh, software dependencies, either coming from um, an RPM um, repo, NPM, um, Ruby games, or whatever, or Py Python dependencies. And then a bunch of properties that are very specific to the component that you are describing here. In our case, we include the build system build ID, build URL, the author, and the host that has built this, this thing. And then we include, of course, the cache hash, timestamp, package type, whether it's a, an RPM or a source RPM, uh, target architecture, source RPM, epoch release version, etc. And then when we create an SBOM document of a build, so it's uh, we don't include that much information, but um, uh, into the components uh, um, block that I referred here, the previous slide. So we add every package that has been created uh, for this uh, from this build, and I think that you know it's it does that describes, you know, uh, every build describes uh, very well all the uh, components and everything is, we keep a trace of where this package, exactly package is coming from. So, yeah. And um, other than that, so we are thinking about uh, using this to to, to create more scenarios where SBOM documents can be useful uh, for us, such as, for example, adding advisory references or, uh, or add a process to authenticate and verify our images and so on. And also we want to add support to create um, SBOM documents with another format, which is, uh, very popular as well, which is the SPDX one. And I think that's yeah. so. That's it. Yeah. Back to you. Sure. So uh, this is still all like some pretty cutting edge stuff. So there may be a lot of concepts that are not well understood, but basically the, the gist of it is that it allows us to sign everything all the way from the sources uh, all the way down into the release. And then this way we know every component of every package within the whole release. 
And then we can also um, revoke trust in one of those things. So if let's say we know there's a, a, a compromised package, we can revoke trust in that. And then that won't be, that package will not be built in the build, build system or anything that relies against it won't be built until we update it with uh, hopefully, you know, remediated package. So um, this is really, really amazing stuff. It's still, like I said, really, really early stages, but um, the great part of it is the ecosystem around this is like growing so rapidly. And there are many tools coming out, which let you like automate lots of this scanning stuff. And the hope is by jumping ahead of this and being ahead of the curve, um, we'll be able to integrate with lots of those tools and we'll also provide a model for other distributions to follow um, in terms of what they what they notarize and what they release for S-bombs and stuff like that. So um, uh, we hope this was valuable. Um, thanks for listening. If anyone has any questions, then uh, feel free to go ahead. Otherwise, uh, you can contact us either here in person or online. Uh, you know where to find us. Thank you. Falcon. Yeah. Thank you. It's an interesting presentation. Um, I guess that for 99% of the user, they will probably not have a look at this because this is clearly just to be used for kind of some kind of certification, I guess. Yeah. Is that mandatory to have such kind of certification to enter some markets for subscription, I guess? So the uh, at least in terms of the U.S. government and probably soon the European Union, um, they're requiring, requiring any federal agencies... Um, that are using any software to have an SBOM for that software registered. And then I'm assuming they'll have some tool chain against which you'll be able to like do scans and stuff, you know, automated to be able to find all these components. So yeah, I, 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 I do believe that they're also working on like a separate federal certification around SBOM as well, but that's still like really, really early on. Um, but yeah, so there, there, there is a lot of stuff in that space around it and there's more coming. Like I said, this stuff is like really, really early stages. So. Hello. Hi there. Um, this is really, really interesting. I mean, I think, um, a lot of, uh, security vulnerability management is going to move to this stuff. There's a whole dev yeah. room at POSDEM on Sunday. Um, have you thought about in your system? Firstly, can you integrate it with something like reproducible builds to um, validate in the future if, uh, whether there's a build system compromise? Um, and the other thing I'm very interested in is, have you thought about um, hashes get deprecated? So I noticed uh, Git still uses SHA-1. At some point, we're going to have to migrate away from that. Um, have you given any thought to future compatibility more generally in your formats uh, for future crypto changes. Yeah, you want uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So use this one. <laughs> sorry, first question was about, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you? I'm sorry. I'll... Yeah. Reproducible builds. Sorry. Reproducible builds. Yeah, that's a tricky thing to answer. Maybe Andrew, you want to, to talk about this? Andrew is the release engineer. <laughs> of Alma Linux, so can you? Always going up. Uh, hi, you know it's it's pretty hard to to talk about reproducible builds. <clears throat> of course, if we're talking about RPM format, because it has some dates included. So, uh, if you want to your like fully reproducible builds where your package will have the same checksum, it's almost impossible at the moment. So, okay, okay, we, you can reproduce build, uh, uh, build shoot, for example, the same dependencies. Yes, we can do this, but still we will have different results. <laughs> so I don't know if it's okay. <laughs> Just repeat the second question again, <laughs> sorry. You don't oh, need the mic. I mean, we can. Yeah, do. it's all on the stream already. Go ahead. Yep. Yell it. What, what happens when the hash changes when, um, when we get rid of chart one, when we get rid of chart two, let's say? 
how are you going to stay in future practical? If you are going to these for 10 years and we dedicate trust to budget, um, how do we keep trusting the uh, the bonds in such and such world? But uh, why should the uh, hash change, be changed? I not, didn't get. Oh, okay, I see. Probably we should soon think about this. <laughs> okay, and I didn't see any questions in the online there's another, chat. So. Sean, there's another question. Oh, there's another question. Sorry. All right. I maybe misunderstood a lot, <laughs> but I just uh, when when you were describing what the part, the content of this as bomb uh, stuff is, it feels like it overlaps a lot with uh, what RPM puts as a metadata when it builds a package already, like the Git sources, verification, build information, and everything. D d is it uh, like? Uh, and and you, but you still collect this as bomb data from the Git sources from the beginning. But wouldn't it make sense to uh, use RPM metadata as a source for this, or like do you do a cross check between as bomb metadata and um, RPM metadata of binary builds you get? So how these two different information pieces are uh, working together? I mean, I don't, I don't have a, you know, a good answer for this. But uh, so we trust, yeah, as uh, we trust our chain of of traces. So we imported Git this, and, and we are indeed using the the RPM specs uh, data that it's already there. So somehow it's included. So I'm not sure whether I'm, you know, asking you. Your question. So, yeah. Yeah, I think she just means instead of us pulling it, like grabbing it from the RPM metadata to put it into the so it's so, so it's we, 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 but we do we 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 yeah we do that already. Yes, we're taking that the data yeah. from there. Right. It's not something that we're making up or from. No, it's it's just there. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, let's wrap up and move on. Oh, there is a question in the chat. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> we missed an online question for the last talk, so I'm going to try not to here. Uh, wonder if SBOM criteria has vulnerability links as part of notification systems to trigger upstream packages, RSS feed, direct, et cetera, or do they rely on current methods to get and check vulnerabilities? So it, if the question is, do we do any notification of upstream if there's any like vulnerability or anything? No, not yet. Um, we don't have that piece figured out yet. Um, but I'm, the plan would hopefully be to collaborate with, uh, you know, stream maintainers and rel maintainers to make sure that anything that's, you know, any that's found anywhere is obviously remediated and someone gets notified somehow so but again this is like the early stages of this work so um it's still too early to kind of be there yet but we're, we we hope that's what the plan is and that's kind of the value we saw in embarking on this project is that something that will add value to the ecosystem as a whole not just for our distribution so great uh, then thank you, all three of you, and we'll move on to the next talk. Thanks. Thank you.